Yes, well, seeing as there's only a couple of weeks left to make your entries for this month's Car of the Month competition over at Gaslands UK, sponsored by Camsell Designs, and the theme being Death Race, I figured this would be a helpful video to show you a couple of tricks for making prison cars or Warden Cadelia cars. So, what, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about cars like this, or vans like this where, as you can see, I think it's fairly easy to tell what it is we're looking at. This is clearly a prisoner's car, and it's a one-way ticket. They have been sentenced to race. The only way they're coming out of this is either alive or, well, buried in a coffin car. So, yeah, lots of little tricks I'm hoping to show you today. Um, some of them as old as dirt. Some of them I've seen on on Facebook, and I'll point to people when when they when it comes up. But uh, yeah, let's let's do some real simple ones. So in this case, easiest technique bar none for making a, any car, any car or truck or anything look like a prison car, is put some bars on the window. So let's do that. But to do this, we're going to need some cars. So we have this lovely DHL van. <laughs> We've got this nifty little thing. What is this? This is a Chevy Nomad. There we go. So we've got this Chevrolet Nomad. And let's open up this custom 71 El Camino, which is really cool with a super high tech looking engine. So let's do that. There we go. Yeah, look at that. And it's a bit strange because they didn't they didn't catch all of it with the uh, the silver spray. So there's this little light grey area, which is quite odd. But it's a lovely, nicely detailed car. Look at those look at those giant engines. Four. Yes. So bars on windows can be done a couple of different ways. Um, the simplest and easiest way would be to take some plastic rod and then cut it to length and glue it to the car or truck you're working on. All you're doing is measuring out a length of plastic rod to roughly the right size to cover the whole sort of breadth of the window from top to bottom. And you might find you need to put a curve in the plastic rod so that it'll actually fit nicely because what you're what you're aiming for is a connection point at the top of the window and the bottom rather than on the window itself it makes it easier when you're painting it you see something I like to do is uh, have some bars that look like they've been snapped or damaged or twisted as part of the the carnage that ensues and that that can make good use of any little scrappy offcuts of plastic rod that you might have. Now in this case I've gone for quite a thick gauge rod for the front windscreen because I figured you know it's it's head on into collisions it's going to need a bit more body to it but for the sides I'm just using a, a thinner rod and I'm just gluing directly onto the onto the truck rather than on the rod itself. Now you can do this by hand or use needle nose pliers, either works, but the key is to just, you know, slowly but surely attach rods along to create that bar effect, you know, like the bars of a prison cell, and to keep them in line with the, the shape of the window, rather than it being just a big square area or a rectangle, so you see how there's a natural curve to the side windscreens. Well, that's what we're covering. Okay, so that's one way to do it. But what if you don't have plastic rod? Well, of course, the answer is paper clips. So just like in the Sweet Tooth build where I used paper clips for sort of creating that turret head, here we can use paper clips for making the armoured front windscreen. And I did play around the idea of having like the sunroof being armoured or or maybe the, the rear or the side windows, but there's no actual plastic um, glass, as it were, on the side and rear, so I've got something else in mind. 
but you don't need to see me snipping out bits of paperclip and gluing them to a car window. It's the exact same, the exact same technique as doing the plastic rod bars. So let's just go straight into the next technique, which is creating an armored visor, like something you'd see out of Death Race. And in this case, all I've done is cut some little, I'd say about three mil long or three mil wide tabs of plastic card uh, just from some scraps and I've cut them short enough that I can then trim them to fit the empty hollow of the windscreen so as I said with this Chevrolet Nomad Hot Wheels toy the side and rear windscreens are hollow there's no plastic there the first thing you want to do is glue down the first plastic tab that will create the first blind and it will help set the stepped look for the remaining two or three that you'll put in and using a pair of needle nose pliers you can then make sure that the next one and the next one both a fit because if they don't fit that's really bad but you can also make sure before you glue them in that there's enough space above it and below it so that you can still see through and into the contents of the car, but your view is obscured. It's not like just solid layers of plastic card that have been glued one on top of the other, because I, I feel like that kind of cheats the look and you don't really get the best results. So as you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. This is what you, you want to end up with. Um, and it is really super easy to do, um, but you do need to make sure that the plastic windscreen isn't in those areas. You have to cut it out first. And here is the finished look for the Chevrolet Nomads armoured windows. I decided just to put some rough plastic card armour at the back. But in all cases when using plastic card like this, do damage it with a craft knife or a Dremel first so that when it's glued in place there's no risk of you damaging the rest of the car. So here we are with both the truck and the car done at this point. Um, there's still plenty more detail to add to these and we haven't even talked about weapons. So what can we add next? Well, we can add some chain and some metal wire. So I've got this Gutermann Creative wire that I bought from a craft store many years ago. And some fine modelling chain here, which back in the day it used to be, oh, you can only get small chains from like jeweler's stores or some sort of railway hobby enthusiast convention or some rubbish. Nah, you can just go on eBay or Amazon and it makes life so much easier. And that's what I did. So in the description I will have the link to the eBay store as well as the specifications of the chain that I bought because you've got to make sure that the links are small enough that they don't look super big and chunky and the key here is you might be thinking James all you're showing us is chains look cool on a car yes but the look is to make it look as though the car has been bound and wrapped in chains and lengths of wire like it's like the, it's not just the driver that's strapped in like every component like the armor plates everything's riveted and bolted and and fastened shut and like everything's really taut and like you know it, it's like a prison basically that's what we're getting at we're trying to make the car look like a big prison on wheels all right okay so what about a twisted wire effect? Well, this is like a first step to making barbed wire. So if you can do this, then the barbed wire that we'll do later on in a different video is just like one more step and you're done. So you start by cutting off a decent length of modeling wire. Um, twist the two ends together so that you've got effectively a big loop hold those two ends either with pliers or in a vise and then using a pen or a pencil push it through the other end so it's in the loop and start to twist and what you're doing is you're you're applying tension to the wire and you're doubling it up now it can be a bit tricky to attach to the car because of how rigid it is a chain will just flop on there nicely but you have to work the wire a bit gentler but Okay, so if you've been following along at this point, you know, we've done some pretty solid additions to these vehicles to make them look like trashy, prisoner-made 
post-apocalyptic, you know, coffin cars of the Warden's gang. Something that really is a one-way ticket to the finish line or bust. Um, but if you look at Death Race, or well, any of the Death Race films, or your more modern apocalypse films, they try to have less of that and more a focus on realistic quote-unquote things. So the firearms are always like M14s and assault rifles. You know, they don't tend to have so many handmade things. So yeah, what am I getting at? I'm saying, if we're going to be putting weapons on these cars, now is the time to use the weapons that are more modern than they are wasteland. And here we are with the finished prisoner van and the finished prisoner car. So there's still a couple of little extra things like the weapons in these films, uh, like realistically they would have mechanisms and armoured casings to like protect the workings of the weapon or like catch the empty shells that fly out. So I've got to, like put some plastic card on, on the guns on top of the truck there, but the car is very much 100% done. Like the little circular saw headlights, I just absolutely adore. I love that look and I'm, I'm really good that I, I went with that in the end because um, it's, it's very silly and goofy, but it is very menacing at the same time. And the minigun on the roof works really well. It might look a bit weird, but I'm going to paint that up to look solid metal. It'll be fine. If you're wondering about the AK on the back, it's more of a decoration than anything. Hello, Wasteland. Yes, and welcome to today's video, where for the third time, ladies and gentlemen, we are reviewing... Do not panic, you've not had a stroke. This isn't two episodes for the price of one, no. I just felt, considering I'm doing these prison cars, and considering I've got this, you know, Camsel Designs as the sponsor of this month's competition over in Gaslands UK, Fran sent me these bits to review. I've got more builds on the way with these bits anyway. I thought it would be good if we just lump it all in together in one video and then we'll have a separate video where I do specifically camsil design like parts used. Um, at some point we're going to have to do the like best of camsil design bits as a single build because I think that would be really cool. Bits from Camsel Designs. So Fran has very kindly sent me a third consignment of bits from his wonderful 3D printing store. Um, this time it's the new armour plates and pieces that he's brought out just in time for the death race competition. So let's have a look at what we have inside. All right. Oh, no business card this time either. Oh, Fran, what are you doing? Well, straight away, it looks like we've got multiple armoured panels for windscreens. Now, what do we have in here? Let's just open this up. This looks quite interesting. Da -da -da. This looks like lots of rams, new ram designs. And now he did message me and ask if there were any bits that I wanted. And I said, well, I do love your resin printed stick grenades. So he may have put some of those in here, but you, you never know. Uh, but it looks like, oh, he has, he has. He did an entire piece of the, uh, the grenade kit, which is really nice. He's done a whole bag of of uh, traffic cones because he, he asked if there was anything I wanted. I was like, yeah, I could really do with more traffic cones. So thank you so much, Fran. I've got just the project for these. And another frame of the propane gas kit. Lovely, because that is an absolutely fantastic kit. It is featured multiple times now in videos on this channel. It's so good, it's so good. <laughs> Okay, so it's the armour pieces. These are the main bits we're looking at today. But thank you so much, Fran. I mean, 
the quality of the bits that he puts out are absolutely rock solid. But on top of that, the customer service is really good. Like, if if you were ordering this at home, you can get and and you're UK based, you can guarantee you'd get this like within two working days, if that. You know, I've yet to have him message me and say, "Oh, oh, I forgot to to post it," or "You'll have to wait a week," or anything like that. It's always here you go, right on time as you want it. So let's have a look at the Rams, I think, first, because these are really cool. Now, this will be the same as previous Bits reviews, so I'll be modifying cars with the pieces shown in the episode. Let's have a look at these Rams. Ooh, ooh, lots of lovely ones. Oh, yes, yeah, so. Oh, man, this is really cool. Okay. So we've got lots of little bits to look at, but okay, let's let's break this down. So, um, yeah, because some of the, some of these are a bit more esoteric and might take a bit more explaining than other bits, because some of these aren't obviously bits for RAM. Some of these are like armored panels. So, okay, let's start with this one. So we've got, and as always, he's got like a how-to section on his website, but I like to try and figure these things out. So. You've got these big rams, which are directly inspired by the kind of ram seen in the Death Race movies, which are super cool. And then he's been tinkering with rams that they can be incorporated with your own bits at home, the details on the Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars, or if you buy his weapons kit, you can actively put little mini guns or rocket launchers or anything poking through either of the gun ports. So there you go. That's a really menacing, sick ram. But the amount of customization options there are really good. I mean, there are stranger bits like this one, which I'll, I'll be honest, I like looking at it. I've no idea how this is meant to work. This is a take on the tombstone from death race because of course because i think i'd i'm pretty sure every company that makes bits for gaslands and post-apocalyptic cars i think i'm pretty sure everyone at some point has looked at the death race film and gone i need to try and make a tombstone and so here's another one just in case you guys you know didn't know that there were any being made and sold out there but i would like to point out this one actually comes in two parts so you can't it's it's not like oh you can only use it as a tombstone no you could you could cut this you could shape it you could have the biggest wheel arches known to man or you could use it as more sort of classic armor like over the hood of the car like that but on on either side but yeah so the rams look absolutely rock solid i mean in total like if we ignore all the support structure and all that in total for the ram kit you get four rams because I'm, I'm presuming that this is meant to be a ram you get four rams and some extra armor as well as all the supports so that's pretty good value for money right there and then let's talk about the actual armor panels that he started making now so these are all pretty different and stylized now the way he described it to me was that this is a system where effectively these will go on any car because they're not specifically shaped to match like, oh, it'll only go on, you know, the Ford XB Falcon, you know, the Mad Max Interceptor. It's like, oh, it'll only go on, you know, this specific Hot Wheels toy car. It's like, no, these are completely universal. So you can take the panels that fit your build and just stick them on rather than being left there scratching your head going, oh, I don't know what armor panel to put on what car is like, oh no you can match them up so let's let's just have a tinker with this for a moment so i quite like the idea of this this car having some open blinds on it so let's take one of these just just so you guys can see at home what i'm talking about when i'm saying how versatile these new bits are and there you go straight away without even gluing anything down you can see the actual look and feel of the car already changing so that's really cool and then for example if i take one of these closed blinds and have that on the side 
because don't get me wrong there would need to be modification and a little bit of editing so that this looks good but you can see where I'm coming at though oh for Pete's sake but anyway the idea is there but yeah no I think that's absolutely fantastic so same as before, I'm going to do a build where I incorporate these bits with some of the other camsel design bits and wheels and all that fun stuff, and I'll be right back. And we are back with the finished prison cars. And what can I say? They've, they've turned out really nicely. I mean... I say that about all the cars I create, but these ones especially. I think the key with painting cars that are inspired by the Death Race films, or indeed meant to look like they're made by prisoners and crewed by prisoners, is to keep the colours relatively muted. So rather than going for really bright and really garish colours, you're going to see a lot of black and grey. But, but, that being said, don't feel like you can't have any color at all it just means that the color that's there is very controlled so let's go through the different paint schemes here so starting off with this particularly lovely rusty boy as you can see primarily this is a black and gray build with lots of metal work and lots of extra details like the chains but I also wanted to have the idea that panels on this car are regularly replaced, which is why this rear fender is a nice red colour, as is the hood. Because when you see cars that have had replacement parts but haven't yet been you know, painted over, that's how they tend to look. So I thought that would be really cool. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how he's turned out. These were all, I've, I've got to say this, these were all really super simple and easy to paint. Like, easily within, say, an hour or so, you could you could knock out three of them. And then the second one, of course, is the gigantic bulldozer DHL truck. Now, sadly, no longer delivering mail. Now it's delivering prisoners to the Sao Paulo Penitentiary. And of course, this one is crewed by inmate number 71, as seen by the giant 71, both on the side and on top. The Claymore mines on the ram came out quite nicely, because that's quite a, a difficult detail to make sure sort of stands out enough. Because it's, it's a green, but it's not like a super bright, vibrant green. It's like a an olive drab green, so that can be quite hard, but yeah... Same as the little rocket on the side. There's quite a lot of green on this one, to be fair. Like, I painted the uh, the M14s, or whatever they are, on top in that green. And then gave them a bit of a dry brush with a beige sort of paint. And yeah, I'm really happy with him. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Which finally leads us to the main racer himself. So this absolutely fantastic El Camino that I got to paint up. I'm really, really happy with how this one looks because one of the tricky parts is I knew I wanted this sort of racing strike going through it, but the problem is it doesn't have the flow through at the back. So it's, okay, a bit of yellow at the front, lots of yellow on the hood, bit of yellow on top of the cab, but then what? So I tried to use a bit of the old uh, snake bite leather Games Workshop contrast paint on the metal to give that sort of yellowish tinge to it while it's still identifiably metal but yeah that one's come out really nice as well and you can you can include color you can have splashes of color with prison cars don't feel like they all need to be dark and they all need to be gunmetal just because that's how they look in the films it's like no you can you can do whatever you like they're your cars but no i am absolutely ecstatic with how these guys turned out and they were super quick and easy and fun to paint. And the best thing about making a prison gang sponsored by the Warden is now that I can compare them to my Interceptor gang that I made. So let's do that. 
but sadly that will have to wait for another video because this one has gone on for far too long considering this is just a simple collection of tutorials and hell they're, they're barely even tutorials and product review of cancel design bits so as always thank you for watching wasteland if you are in the uk by all means check out the gaslands uk car of the month championship the tournament of kings going on right now for march there's about one week left at the time of recording this this video has taken so long to edit it's insane but the entries we're getting now are looking so good so good like it's really gonna be like it i, I do not envy the judges any of the months but this one oh oh this is gonna be a good one so Thank you for tuning in Wasteland and I will see you all in the next video and build those prison cars because you are sentenced to race.